can you tell me a little bit about what provoked you to actually create this script and this, this powerful movie? Yeah, yeah, well, the film basically studies the origins of the relationship between politicians and gangs. Mm -hmm. um, and that came from a time when the Cold War was really happening in the world and the Caribbean was very much the front line of the Cold War. And what happened in that era really helped to shape where the country is now and where the region is generally. Um, so I really wanted to put a lot of what, why we are the way we are into context right. and connect it back to what, you know, the politics of the time. Right. Um, and we did that through this story and through this character, Ricky. Right. You know I mean? So, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of things that we don't know yeah. about, you know, Jamaica and the things that you guys have been through. Yeah. So it was very eye-opening yeah. to see the, the turmoil and the fight that the people have to, to have better. So. Can you tell me what did you have to draw from to be Ricky? Because you had a lot of different um, things that you had to deal with. We've seen love, we've seen, you know, passion for the cause. Well, um, growing up in, in Kingston and in some of the, in some of what you call inner cities, mm -hmm. Jamaican inner cities, it, 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 I'm exposed, see, I'm exposed to I'm exposed to guns, I'm exposed to poverty, and I'm exposed to not having things, you know. So it was it was pretty it was pretty like as I would say, right up my alley. Right. You know. Maybe I was not actually a gang member firing shots in the street, but I knew of gang members firing shots. I knew of done guns, you know, firing shots in the street who, who I could speak to, you know, and you know, talk to you and run joke with you and things. So I, it's 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 pretty easy in Jamaica and pretty easy in other parts of the world to really get a firearm, do your thing, you know. So I, I I drew from that. I drew from the relationship I I, I, I had with dance in my community relationship. I, I, I had with um, other young youths aspiring to be dance in my community, and as well as doing a film like this, we rehearsed. You know, so it, it it's a thing where I, it's. It, it's 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 pretty easy, you know, mm -hmm. to, to to see a bad guy right. because it's so attractive as well. Badness attractive. Mm -hmm. So when you see a bad guy, you see him, you say, wait, I saw him walk, I saw him talk, and you know, thing. And we also watched a lot of, um, not a lot, we also watched one film, one main film, mm -hmm. Rockers. And we, 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 that rockers kind of, kind of taught us the era, you know, the, the 1970s era, you know, the walk, the talk, the style, the fashion, the kind of feeling, you know. So it was, it was, it was a, it was a beautiful project, and um, a learning experience for me as well, you know, knowing about Green Bay Massacre, knowing about what actually took place, reading because doing research, you know, finding out, say, really, is that really what, what happened, you know? So. It, let's just say doing better, better must come. When I did that film, better must come. It, it allowed me to open my mind, and it, 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 it enhanced who I am today. You know, I'm, I'm glad that I was involved in this project. You know, because this project, this project is timeless. It is. You know? Ricky was a very, very powerful character. Now I want to ask you, what was your purpose in creating this? That you have um, a certain you know, audience that you were reaching out to? Um, the goal was to make a statement as a filmmaker mm -hmm. to show um, our, our, not only my abilities, but that of my crew and my cast mm -hmm. to make um, something like world class cinema. Mm -hmm. um, it was also a statement about, um, you know, People know about Jamaica primarily because of our cultural output, primarily because of music. Right. And the, the moment when our music was conquering the world was the mid to late 1970s. Um, and before and after, but that was the moment I think where it kind of hit certain critical mass. Mm -hmm. And the stories and the music that people were listening to was always talking about rising above oppression and standing for your rights. and. And, and, and fighting against Babylon, etc. Right. And these reggae greats were, were the, the music resonated internationally, mm -hmm. but the, the 
content that they were speaking about was what they were seeing right in front of them on the streets of Kingston and, and throughout the, the country. So I wanted even international audiences who, who know and love Jamaica because of even our music, right. because of that era, to understand how to put it into a certain context. This is what they were speaking about. You know what I mean? This is what Bob Marley was speaking right, about. Right. You know what I mean? It resonated everywhere, but this is what he was talking about right. in particular. So it's announcing, you know, it's announcing the arrival of a serious new movement in Caribbean cinema. I'm only one of the people in this movement. I'm not the only one by any means. There's some amazing films coming out, and amazing filmmakers, and amazing acting talent. And what we hope with this is that we can do the best we can to cut a path for the next great work in Caribbean cinema because it's real and there's a lot of us and we're coming hard, so, you know? All right, and so in America, we are coming hard with the firm movement with Ava DuVernay. And so, can you tell me a little bit about the movement that you have going on, the name of it, how yeah. people can, you know, support? Well, I mean, there is just a general energy of a push for, for serious Caribbean cinema. Mm -hmm. I am a part of a film collective called New Caribbean Cinema. Okay. And we basically, um, it's a group of directors and crew and cast that essentially will work together and work for free to create quality cinema without sitting around and waiting for the money to come. Um, you can check out newcaribbeancinema.com, that's our blog. And we just created a project called Ring the Alarm. Ring the Alarm is seven short stories by six different directors, all set in Jamaica. All of these films were shot in one day. We put them together as a feature with similar themes. Um, and I mean, our collective is called New Caribbean Cinema because that's ultimately what we represent. New Caribbean Cinema, the, cine the Caribbean cinema of this generation, using all the tools and and all the technology that we have and just get break it down into ideas and execution. So are you looking to do more in the States? There is a yeah. very large I'm looking to build our market in the States. Right. Um, better must come, I, I would want to get a, you know, everybody who sees this film steps into a very powerful reaction. Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter of whether it's a film worth seeing. It's just a matter of how you're going to get there. Right. How you're going to get the message, how you're going to see it. So. Um, through a firm, which is an amazing organization that also harnesses the passion of, of all these folks that want to see some great independent cinema of the African diaspora. Um, we intend to keep it moving, keep the word going, keep it spreading until it, you know, it's already hitting a map, until it's a critical mass. We try to carve out our own zone in the world of cinema. Thanks for doing it. Yep. And I really appreciate you guys coming to Philadelphia, sharing with us, giving us something to learn about your culture, bringing it here. So thank you very much. Yeah, man, thank you. Philly was a great host and a great vibe. So, so you know, come back. Come back soon. Thank you guys for watching. This is LeVon Nichols. Peace out.